YouTube channel. You're listening, and we appreciate you. As you listen, we want to hear feedback from you. Don't feel afraid. You will absolutely hear our messages. You are able to talk with us directly. You're able to use our podcast to leave a voicemail. Please put that info up and our YouTube information up, please, and thank you. And we want to make this the most, not just to have someone click like, why do you like us? Today's thought is going to be inspired from developing self-discipline. Do what needs to be done, even if you don't want to do it. How many things have you all done that you really didn't want to do? I want you to make the list. And it can be one, two, three, four, five things. Or something that you have had to work through or that you're still working through that you get it done, but you don't really want to do it. You know, it's it's part of what we do when we do it and how we do it. Self disciplining is more of a contract between you and yourself. How many are finding it hard to self discipline? And what is it that you're having a hard time? disciplining yourself with or do you have discipline you know some people have lived their whole life or now are living their lives with no discipline you know you you have a whole big cake Uh, I remember when I was pregnant with my firstborn and I loved strawberry cheese cake. Could not get enough of it. In fact, I would eat the whole pie and of it. That's no self-discipline. But you know, I use the rule of I'm eating for two. And I ate that cheese cake almost every day. Now, would you say that that's more disciplining or not? Just too much of anything can be challenging and not not enough of something. Something that's going to change your life motivate you, help you to become the best you that you can become. Um, Not enough of. So now you look at yourself and you have to do something. Can you imagine if I was still eating cheesecake like that with no self-discipline? I'd be gaining a lot of weight. And Lord knows I don't need any more weight. In life, we must commit. And I want you to remember this word, commit. As you think about the word commit, what are you committed to? Sometimes you get a lot of people that are committers. They'll commit to something and they'll say, yes, I want to do that. Yes, I will do that. I'm doing it. And then they back up. 
what is more, they may never get started after they say the word commit. So today, I want to ask you to commit to none other than yourself right now, right here. Because you see, that's part of our work through. And we're going to have a work through today. What is your version of self-discipline? And if you're listening to this podcast for all the public, write in, right where you see our podcast. Tell us what your version is. Call us. Let us know. Trish, we'll start with you. My version of self-discipline is basically checking myself when I make a mistake or something or when, for example, when I don't exercise and I know that I'm craving a lot of sweets and a lot of like salty foods, I discipline myself in saying, oh, I can't do that because I need to work out. So I have to limit myself to what I eat. So that's how, that's my version of disciplining myself. Yeah, yeah. It takes work. Thank you so much. You just got two variations of what self-discipline looks like for us as host and co-host. So I just gave you mine. Mine involves committing yourself. Uh, uh, it's far different than a resolution. But now, when you, you think about your ability being capable to do control your feelings, overcome weaknesses, you are thinking of self-discipline. Self-control, it's a part of that. Now, our discipline, you know, that that's not an outdated word. I want you to understand that. And I'm wondering if people are even doing it now, disciplining themselves, or do you have the willpower and the determination to do it? You know, back, back in the day, our parents used that word, and it still is a practical word because we do it with our children. We check them, check into ourselves. That was nice verbiage that you used, Trish. But it is still disappointing. Yeah. We're going to talk about ourselves. And right, right now, before us, I want you to wipe your slate clean. I don't want you to think about it. Anything else but present. And don't worry, your slate is going to have something on it before the end of this podcast. Guarantee you. So, right now, I want you to wipe it clean. Wipe it as if you were starting on a Monday morning at some type of school. Remember how? Uh, at the end of the day, the teacher would wipe the whiteboards clean. That's what we're going to do today. Now, as you think about your power that you manage, that is housed inside of you, along with your power comes your ability to be able to control what is happening inside of your house body with your thoughts, your emotions, 
change your behavior in the face of challenge. I want you to think about, about this. We want you to be able to look at yourself and ask yourself, you ready to write on the blank slate? Do you have self-control, willpower, strength, persistence, or determination? Which one fits you best? And I want you to write the word. Even if you need to have a notepad that you are writing down, I would like for you to write it down. Not only are you going to write it down, or what, what have you had in it? I'm going to repeat the question. Which one of these have you had? Self-control, willpower, restraint, persistence, and determination. If I'm missing any, please let me know during the course of this podcast. Is your slate clean right now, Trish? No. Or did you found something? And that's, that's honesty. Because we all had to write something. If, you're, if your slate is clean right now, then you're obviously not following along. And I'm talking to the audience but you should have something that you want to self-discipline. What word did you put down, Trish? I put down determination and persistence. I put down restraint. Yeah. I want to be persistent and I want to be determined. And I'll tell you why I needed to put those down because sometimes... I don't want to do that. But I need to do that as regards myself. Sometimes I don't want to do that, but I need to do that. Be persistent and determined. Why did you put down restraint? I put that down because... I need to restrain myself from automatically doubting my abilities because it stops me from reaching my abilities and doing things that I know that I can do. So I need to restrain my mentality from automatically thinking, oh, I can't do it. Good morning and welcome for those of you who are coming in virtually. Good morning, good morning, Ian. Where are you listening in from? Please include that. Yeah, thank you for that. You see, I started out with a strawberry cheesecake. And remember what I said? I love strawberry cheesecake. And that was my craving when I was pregnant with my first child. My second born, I loved collard greens. I could not go a day without it. I would beg my mom to make them. Beg her to make them. Couldn't get enough. But you know what? I think about disciplining myself. And this may help a lot of people who are dieting. Because sometimes I always wonder, why are people always on a diet? You know? I have a friend that is always on a diet. And I ask my, myself, why? You look great. But see, maybe the person.
person or the persons are not feeling so great. So maybe they feel like they need some self-control in their lives. They need to restrain themselves from consuming food. Or better yet, here's a thought. Maybe that always dieting may not be about food. Maybe it's about another feeling. If you can't control one thing, you feel like maybe through this you can gain control. And I hope that you all are going to self-discipline yourself today. It's Monday. So we're asking you, what does self-discipline look like for you? What does it look like? You know, um, there are different kinds of discipline, and we're going to talk about that. Hold on just a moment. We're going to talk about that. The different kinds of discipline. And here are some disciplines right now. Restrictive discipline, active discipline, and preventative discipline. Let's think about that, where you fit in. Self-discipline looks so different. Your self-discipline looks different. And we're going to talk about those type of discipline. Now, when we think about reactive discipline, what am I really saying? Does anybody hear the word that I'm really saying? Trish? Yes, I do. It's active. Yeah. 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 Let's give you a example. An example. Many of you make plans. You have to catch a flight. You have to be somewhere at a certain time so you consider the traffic. And that traffic or that flight has made you late. How do you feel? This is a, another spot for your flight to have something on it. Because nobody's perfect. How do you react when I'm late? How do I react when I'm late? We'll start with me. I am upset. I have anxiety. I'm saying to myself in the car, hurry up, hurry up. I'm late. Is that the traffic's fault that I'm late? Should I blame it on the traffic? What do you all think? Or should I have reacted differently? And if so, I want you to think about that for a moment. While I turn to my co-host and ask her, how does she react to this? When I'm late, I, I have the same thing. I have a fear of being late. So when I'm late... I am, I'm also, I'm embarrassed because I don't want to be looked at as someone that's not punctual. And also, I have heavy anxiety, so if I am late, I'm not walking in there if I'm, if I'm late. 
know a lot of people like that. So that is not uncommon, ladies and gentlemen. You'd rather not show up than be late. But now, think about this. If you're late, here's my go-to. Instead of hunking the horn or talking to myself about the traffic in the car, maybe I should have managed my time a little bit better. For those of you who have reactive discipline, I want you to draw a time clock. Most of us are awakened by time clocks. Me, I hate alarm clocks. I absolutely, I have, I have never had a clock wake me up. So I've had to self-discipline myself. I am my time clock. Don't ask me why or how. But I cannot stand an alarm waking me up. But see, you need that alarm clock to wake you up because if you don't have it, you're going to be late to everything that you have been committed to. Everything you said you would do, whether it's work, school, sports, event, concerts, you need that, and that's okay because that's your support. Now think about your clock. You have numbers 1 through 12. I want everyone to draw a clock. And maybe there is somewhere that you have to be today. Somewhere that you need to be. You know, doctor's appointments. How many of us just look forward to going to the doctor? We just look forward to that. We can't wait to go to the doctor. Said no one. How about the dentist? See, those are the things that we have to commit ourselves to that we really don't want to, but we need to be there because we're checking in to ourselves. Oftentimes, if you're late, if you're 15 minutes late, 30 minutes late, your appointment is canceled. You have had that happen. Like your appointment gets canceled. Reactive, reactive discipline. You've been like it, but now there's good in everything. You see, because even in the flow of traffic, I made a deal with myself to discipline myself. Because if I'm late, some of us are not leaders because we did the right thing we got up we want to be on time but there's traffic you, you can't do anything about that but now you ladies and gentlemen and react by doing what I do, and that is putting in a music list. Facebook, we do not, our music that is played is not, it is owned by co-host Trish. She, she has the right to that music. So now, and you have room for growth. 
Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you, audience members, have room for growth? In the times that you are reacting, can you react for growth? Maybe if you missed the bus or missed your appointment, maybe you're going to have time to do something that you would normally not have time to do. Because you got to wait. And this is good for me, too. How are you doing there? Is there room for growth? You have other opportunities. Maybe you're going to meet somebody and you start a conversation with that person. Time goes by. Self-discipline. While you are reacting or have reactive discipline, your mindset shifts. You're able to help your situation. And you start reacting positively. Now we're going to talk about active. Active. What are you actively doing right now? How is your blank space looking now? So we are very interactive. Podcast, and we want to hear from all of you. So, when we think about what we're going to eat, what our decisions are, how can we better ourselves? You see, having like cheesecake doesn't mean that I should eat one every day. How healthy would that be? Exercise. Many people love to go to the gym. That's active. If you've been at the gym, you see people are not just hanging around. They're active. See them on their treadmill. Yeah, they might have their earpiece and their ear to catch their call, but they're actively, presently in the activity. And if you don't have any activity that's going to further or better you, find one. Some of us have morning routines. When we first started this podcast, it was our, our morning routine because we were on air every single day except Saturday and Sunday. And then because streaming came possible, became possible, we started to stream as we are now. Which many of you, and I've been hearing, and I thank you for that, that you have started by by talk facing the lion podcast is your routine. While some of you diet actively, and there's no, no room for shame. There, there's no room for shame. Because if you're not comfortable in your body, that is your choice. So what do you decide to do? You decide to think about active discipline to do something that works for you. You see, self-control goes hand in hand with that self-discipline. When we think about self-control, Another thing that I have self-control over is I love wine. But I'm going to limit myself. I love wine doesn't mean I'm going to drink the entire bottle and then have another one. 
it means for me, my limit is going to be two glasses of wine, no matter where I am. No matter where I am. That fits me. But for you that may be struggling with maintaining your sobriety, recovering from, or still challenged by, what is yourself? This is what what at the area. You know, a lot of times social media is a really wonderful tool if you're using it correctly. You limit yourself with that becoming active. When we are thinking about our times together, your family's time, what do you do actively before your dinner? Are you eating together? Or if not, what do you do that's something active? Maybe you're not, not eating together. The fact that you have something to eat is a blessing in itself. But what do you do? Some people set the table before dinner. Some might wash their hands before dinner. My mom had this active discipline when we were growing up, my siblings and I, and I respect it. That's why I don't do it enough. <laughs> now, I'm being real honest here. Making up the bed every day. See, that's one of the things that I may need to do, but I don't want to do it. I was at my sister's house she asked me a question. Why is it that you don't get under the covers when you're over here? My only honest answer was, I hate making the bed. Because when I was a little girl, that was something that my mother made us do. Before we came into the kitchen, that was so discipline. She was training me for that. And until this day, it is something that needs to be done and I hate doing it. For some time I need to make up my bed. Here's the other one. Keeping clothes off the floor. I figure it's my room. Now I don't have to Pick my clothes up. But why do I need to do it? Because it's clean. So if we practice, the more that you practice, it becomes something that better is you. Mind you, I like a clean house. But I, I always tell myself this. It's my bedroom. I got my nerve. So I need to be self-disciplined. Preventative discipline. How is that looking for you all? We're going to take a break. We're going to be right back with our work. Is with your host, me. 
with us all week because we're going to give you live talk after dark in the bedtime. Stay with us. for me. Which one of those 
those words do we need? You see how it changes? See, when we first started our discussion, we talked about things that we, words that we needed to work on. Now I need patience. I, I never kid myself about patience because patience is a virtue. To be patient with myself is to be patient with others. I need that. So I need to work on it here and now. Because I know that to discipline myself is not easy. Because why? I don't want me telling me what to do. Sounds like a problem, right? See, I have to be in a mind space of, I need to tell myself to do this. It may irritate me. It may create for me restriction when I self-discipline. But self-discipline has gotten people really great jobs. Self-discipline has created a better view. You know, like I said about the alarm clock, I hate alarm clocks. Never had an alarm clock wake me up personally, but I hate that because my alarm clock is telling me what to do. But you, on the other hand, may not look at it like that and thank God that you don't. Because alarm clocks have saved many people. So maybe if I look a little deeper inside of myself, maybe my self-discipline is I just don't want to be told what to do. Would that be? And when we don't want to be told what to do, how can we continue to be successful in being self-disciplined? Because if we don't want anybody telling us what to do, we can reflect on ourselves. Do we like the sound of being told what to do? So we go through life with no structure. No commitment. You know, back in the day, I could remember getting up on Saturdays. And if you're a 70s kid, you can identify with what I'm about to say. You get up. Of course, my mother always had chores. But Saturdays was the time that my mother really did let us watch cartoons. We didn't watch much TV, but Saturday morning, I was going to get my cartoons in. Just let me tell you. But after that, we were going to have chores. Some kids, even today, wake up. No commitment to anything. No structure. start helping our young minds. Have self-discipline because see parents, you may be raising your children when when they don't have this type of self-discipline because they don't know self-discipline. They're just kids. We have to set a foundation for them. There's nobody like somebody that just does whatever they want to do. Have you ever had a kid like that? How many of you have saw a kid like that? You say, boy, that parent lets that kid kid do whatever he wants. We've all been faced with that kind of kid. And how do you feel about it? You have reactive. What do you say about that kid? Trish. I say that kid, I honestly say that kid needs discipline. That's what I say. Yeah, don't don't we? It's a nice way of putting that. Or give me a week with that kid. 
So you see the difference when we don't discipline ourselves versus we do? Self-discipline creates growth. It creates committed people. I hate waking up with nothing to do. I don't care if I'm sick. I always am looking for something to do. There are times when that self-discipline can be out of control. Know your limits. Well, that's And we want to talk about that. What are your old habits when it comes to discipline? Or are you a person that was raised with none? See, because if you're a person raised with none, it's going to be difficult for you to get that. But now you don't have mommy or daddy telling you what to do now. You may be a grown-up with children. How do you help them? You have to replace it. Find a motivation. Are there obstacles in your being self-disciplined? You want to be a self-disciplined person. You say, that person over there, Mr. Discipline, wow, he just seems like he has it so together. You don't know what Mr. Discipline has had to go through. Seen. Inside. What's your motivation? Your progress. How are you doing with your yourself? discipline. How do you fare? Start being persistent. See, I already know to be persistent and to be determined, it doesn't matter what the other people say. I'm persistent and I am determined. I can look at my progress and I can say, wow, you know, this progress, wow. And we do that. Trisha and I as co-hosts and hosts, we do that. Here's an exercise. Young woman wakes up early in the morning at dawn. Each morning she exercises. She works in her office and ignoring any distractions and she's committed to her project at work. In the evening, she is committed to attend online classes because you see her goal is graduating in a few months with a MBA. You see how that works? How many of us like waking up and dump? Anybody? I do. See, I am a dawn waker. <laughs> Wherever I go. Wherever I go. I want to rise early because that is the best me. You have to find the time that is a best you. Not to find that time. Because what did we say? It's up, she exercises, she goes to the office, she works well, she gets to work well. She gets it done. Then she comes home in the evening and does what? Classes online. Because, see, she has a goal. She'll be graduating in a few months. 
maybe our schedules don't look like that, but maybe we can discipline ourselves in other ways. Doing something that is less uncomfortable. It's easy to challenge ourselves when we love to do something, but it's less easy when we don't like to do something, but we are determined and persistent to do it anyways. We say, mm, I don't like that. You see, because most of those people who are at the gym, they love going to the gym. Most of them, they go because they have a goal in mind, or because they want to meet somebody, or because, 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 because. To do something that you don't necessarily How can you look at your situation like this young woman? Her situation was that she had a goal in mind. What goals are you having in mind? Put a goal before yourself. You know, most people who eat food don't plan on eating as much. I want to say that for people who do diet. But what begins to happen to them is... It feels good to them. It's comforting to them. They like the food. So they're not paying attention to how much, how many portions. All they know is this food tastes and feels good. So the self-discipline goes out the window, but sometimes even with eating. And let's not make fun of this, folks, because many people are out there and they're struggling to be self-disciplined when it comes to their food portions. And I say to a lot of people who are dieting, those who are on diets, sometimes it's not about the weight. It's about the comfort. It's about perhaps insecurity. It may not be because they necessarily need to go on a diet, diet. Body shame. How many of you have had that happen to you? How many of you have had to restrict yourself from eating because someone says you were fat? Even when I started to gain a little weight, and I'm not fat by any means, People were saying, oh, you gained weight. I didn't like people to say that. So I didn't run to dieting because, again, I have the mentality of, I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I can help myself because I wasn't overweight. But see, we can do damage by saying unkind things to people. Let's self-discipline our mouths. Maybe, and I want you to think about this and keep saying this. The people that we know diet because of some insecurity. No one has told them that they eat too much. Something in them has caused them.